Hello, my people. How are we doing? Yeah. Is it good? We got a good lunch? Yeah. Yeah, we're all fed. Are you getting tired now? A little sleepy after lunch? You come into the AC, the, the food's kind of slow in your blood flow, it's slowing you down, you're a little tired, sleepy. But we have no time to sleep because we have a lot of work to do, right? A lot of us have to work on our sketches. Did we take some good things away from the critique? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Omar's naming criticizes everything we do. Omar's honest and will lead you to the truth. It's always a benefit. He's right. going to lead us to the promised land. It's called benefit. If I was just sweet and nice all day, then one, I wouldn't be me, and two, I wouldn't be honest with you, so. But you still would have hair. Nice would not give me hair. Thank you, Hope. <laughs> all right, so now we have to talk about the next step in our process, the evolution of your logo. Um, we don't have class again today. It's Wednesday, so we don't have class again until Monday. So you have a lot of work to do from today to Monday, all right? On Friday... We kind of want to see some of your sketches. Right. Huh? Wait. Well, you're turning in more sketches tonight, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're already in the planner. Right. Because we need to know that you have three separate ideas. Right. So you have 10 that you showed us. And if we told you that we like 13, 14, and 15, that means you still have to do more. Right? You're not there yet. You haven't gotten to the promised land yet. Because we need to pick the three that you're going to work on further. Right. So before I dive into the, your workflow that you'll be going through for this next part, I'm just going to go through my workflow. It's very similar to what you're doing right now. All right. This is a little bit different. This is for class. Um, I did it for example for a class that used to be later on in the program. Uh, just talk about workflow and process. So again, you got your table of contents. You have to create a brief. Uh, now all of you got a brief, correct? Are you ever going to use that brief again that we gave you? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes? No? Okay, so why would you use that brief again? Uh, well, one, to make sure you're on track with the actual project and brain itself. So what are you taking away from the brief that we gave you? The... Sorry, the... Questions. Okay. All right. Those questions, you can delete the answers, because the answers aren't relevant to your next project. But the next time... You have a project, or let's say your mom's best friend is opening up a cookie shop, right? Or a bakery shop. And she's like, oh, you went to full sale. Can you do me a logo? What do you send them? The brief. The questionnaire. Say, fill this out so we're on the same page. Give me some examples. Let me know what inspires you. Let me know, you know what direction you're thinking about going. Right? You need to educate yourself about your client and what they want before you design anything. You can't just say, oh, I need a logo for a bakery. Go ahead, make me bakery logos. Because you're going to do a bunch of work and go nowhere because you didn't communicate to them from the beginning. So take the questions. Add to those questions. Create a Word document. Create a template in InDesign in which you have those saved. And every time you get a new client, you just send them that, put your logo on it, and say, listen, fill this out, and then we'll move on from there. All right, this is the first step and to the right direction. Here's the same process you did. I did competitor logos, good logos, and then companies I like to work for. Um, I've worked for all of them, uh, except for Pentagram. Uh, big New York fan, Brooklyn Brewery, best brewery I've ever been to. It used to be my cheers for a while there in New York. All right, color palette. You haven't chosen your color palette yet, but normally you get a starting point for a color palette. Um, your logo should be worked in black and white at first. And then we're going to evolve them into color for the process. And I'm going to go over that in your template in a little bit. Um, typography samples. So this dive a little bit deeper in regards to the research. It's not just things that inspire you. It's more typography and then shapes and complex shapes. Little things that might inspire your overall design. Type choices. Same thing that you guys did already, right? Simplify. Um, textures and materials that you might want to play around with. Um, identity package. So what you are creating in this next step is you're doing an icon. You're doing a wordmark. You're doing a logo setup, right? Icon and wordmark, comma, how they work together, right? That's going to go into your identity package. So you're going to have to do business card, letterhead, envelope. Right? 
That's going to be the, the next bigger step. And once you finalize that, you're going to create the packaging. And then we're going to prototype the packaging, build it, and you're going to take a picture of it, and boom, you're done. Right? My word list, my mind map, you guys didn't have to do this, but I did a little mind map in the beginning. This is, you know, everyone has their own workflow and their own process of getting to where they have to go. All right, not everyone's workflow is going to be exactly the same. Um, but you have to find something that helps you break down or think about things when you're developing a logo or a concept. You just don't dive on a computer and go. There, there's a process here, and you should go through it. A lot of people like you to work through a mind map and then go from there. If that doesn't work for you, find something that works for you that's along these lines, that gets you thinking about your brand or identity or where you're going. It's only going to make your end result better. Then sketches. You notice these aren't perfectly drawn sketches. They're ideas. They're just kind of roughly. Um, now, for this, I have there's like 70-something sketches in here. Right? Now, I didn't have to deal with, I don't have to make an icon in a word mark. Right? They didn't give me these rules that we gave you. I was about to so say. The rules that you have are different. <laughs> right? So when you make a logo for your client in the future, you can say, well, what are you thinking about? Do you want an icon? Do you want a combo mark? Or do you want just a, a word-driven logo? Right? This is terminology that you're going to be using to your future clients. Right? So you can find out what they want or what they're feeling. And this is how you sell it to them. You're going to tell them what's in their best interest, depending on their audience and where they're going. If they're apparel and they're doing something, is the word mark going to be more dominant? Or is an icon going to be more dominant? You know? Does Volcom need the, the mark? Or does the word mark work better? Right? Does Hurley written out work better, or does the, their little icon with the H work better? Right? These are things that you have to think about and sell to your client, because you're the person who knows best. You have to educate them on what's going to be the best logo or combo for them. So this is just me going through it. I do all the sketches. Then after I do the sketches, I jump into I mean, I jump into Illustrator. Now, normally these would all be black and white. On all of yours, we want them to be black and white. I traditionally, because I, I know this is going to look good in black and white, I already jumped in the color. So my V1, my first rough, is this. So I did a 30. That's my first one. This is the first time I get this. I went through my Mac, I got the thought process going, and then I knocked out 30, and I sent them 30. I didn't pick out the top three, I didn't pick out my top 10, I sent them 30 done in Illustrator. One, I'm very comfortable with Illustrator and I can do a lot of work in a short amount of time. So me pushing all these is, you know, not that hard for me to do. There might be a curve there for you. For you to do this many logos in one night might be, you know, your workflow might be a little bit different. So we're not asking you to do all this, but this is my workflow, this is how I do it. After that, I would send this to the client and say, pick your top three. I don't share my sketches with my clients because my sketches and my brainstorming and my mind map is an internal working process. It's not something that I'm, I'm working with them for. All right? This is how I get my juices going, and then I just dive into here. So from there, the client selects three. Here's three they select. All right? Who selected them? Did I select the top three? No, the client did. The client did. They get a feel. It's for them. So then after that, they bring this back, and then I play around with it a little bit more. Then I explore a little bit more with each of them. Maybe some different shapes. Play around with some different colors. I, um, I put the tagline in there. The client wanted a speaker. All right. Do I want to put a speaker in the logo? No. no. Do I tell the client... Hell no, a speaker's not going to work for you. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So, you personally, whenever you're dealing with a client and there's a direction that they want to go in that you really don't agree with, do you say, hey, maybe you should think about this before? There's a polite way of doing things. They are a client. They're the one paying you. Right. There is a, um, a way of leading them to water. And leading them to water is not cutting them off and saying their ideas don't work. Right. Leading them to water is not um, saying, let me be the designer and you be the client. Let's leave it at that. Mm -hmm. All right? We have to show them examples of things that are successful and not successful. 
So if I think something's not going to be successful for my client, I'm gonna show them that it's not successful. So they said put a speaker, for me, a speaker was not the answer, but I still put a speaker in there, right? Mm -hmm. What did they say when they saw it? They hated it. Bad idea. I agree, but I gave them what they wanted, mm -hmm. and now we're at a place where we're, we're comfortable talking to each other, we're communicating with one another, we're in the same playing field, and now we can work on it. Because they have to know that you're gonna to give to them. They don't hire you for you to be dominant and for you to tell them what to do all day. They have to know that you're working together on something. So that's part of the process. Your goal is to make them look good. And it's about them, not about you, right? And then I test it, right? I do a rough and then I take it on a little thing, right? This is coffee and cookies. Letterhead, business card, I have two orientations of the business card. I'm just roughly seeing how it would look, all right? You'll notice that there is information in the business card, right? It's a John Smith, there's a phone number, a title, and that information there. You notice there's a little hierarchy there, right? Is the name larger than the, um, the rest of the information? Yes. Yes. All right. So when you do your business cards, you should have name, title, phone number, address, email, website, because that's the information that would be in the business card. It doesn't have to be final. That's not going to be your final setup. But for you to actually look at it and for, you to make, for it to make sense, you have to see it. We're visual people. We're graphic designers. We're creative people. So you have to see it like that. Letterhead has an actual letter on it. All right? Then I go to the next one. I go through the process. I test some things out. Maybe play around with some different fonts. Maybe play around with some different marks. I put the speaker in it, right? You can tell I love that speaker. <laughs> All right? But they see the speaker. It's not working. We agree. We move on. I take it on a date. Coffee and cookies, right? I go through the same process. See how the lockup works. Try some different things with it. Notice how I'm cropping in here, playing around there. Letterhead is pretty much the same. On the letterhead, every letterhead needs to have their logo and their contact information. The same as the business card. If I get that letter from you, how do I contact you back? So just don't plop your logo on there and call it a day. You have to think about all these things. Right? Every letter should have margin space. So don't have your letter going all the way to the edge. Right? If you type it, if you did a Word document, whenever you did an essay back in the day, you had to print it out or turn it in, you had nice spacing on there, right? The same here. And then I did the same for this one. Put it to its audition, and then I did some sample stuff here. Or I just put it on t-shirts. I don't know why putting something on a t-shirt makes things look so relevant to people, but for some reason, anytime I put something on a t-shirt, it just, wow. people are like, oh my god, I love it, love it. <laughs> <What's it going? laughs> it's a t-shirt. Oh, it's great. It wasn't great over here. No, now it's beautiful. <laughs> All right, this is mocking it up. This is prototyping it. This is part of the cell, part of the dance. All right? You have to learn this. So they told me the t-shirt sold them. This is the part of the whole project that sold them off. All right? Which one do you think they picked? The one, the Sing Loud Media, the, the, the third girl. This one right here? Yeah, that one or the first one. Or the first one. I, I kind of like Two out of three, three, I guess. So you're in between there, all right? Anyone else? I think it's the first one. First one? I'm gonna put my money on the purpose of black t shirt dude. This third? Yep. Alright, everyone's no, the this one yeah. or this one? No, the other one. This yeah. one here? Yeah, the second from the other. I just don't like the text it's spread out almost all the way to on the arm. Alright. That's me personally. So just looking at the t shirt, I can really eliminate one right off the back, right? Yeah. This one, right? Yeah, that's the one I want. All right, and the reason why is because of its what? It's length. It's too long. That's I, yeah, I don't. I can't make it bigger. Arm, this arm. is this is as big as I can make it on a t-shirt. So you can't see me from the crowd. I can look like anybody else. You know who I am right here, right? Mm -hmm. You know who I am right there. And when I make it small, these are stronger as well. They stand out more. 
So that was their room. All right. Then I do the final logo style. I use my final pantom colors. The font that I use, I do it in black and white. I do it in, in a knockout without the little uh, word bubble behind it, and then I put the word bubble in there. I do its final identity package. So you see, I, I did this. I changed up the business card because I like what I did with that other business card and cropping the logo. So I did that over here at the end. And then I did the letterhead. All right. And their envelope. I'm sorry, letterhead and envelope. And then I prototyped it. I put it in a mock up so they could see it, how it would look. I mean, you print out the business cards. I put it in another mock up so you get a feel for it. All right. You have this mock up. You have this mock up. And you have this mock up. All right. We gave that to you in your assets. Well, this one and, and this one are not in your assets. They're a download. When you get to this point in the project, it'll be a download from FSL. So you will have these. You don't have them today, but you will have these. All right? And then that was the end of my project for that. Yay! You did a really good job, Omar. Thank you. See, the thing is, you don't, once you finish something, you don't get up. You did a great job. Get that paycheck that says, I did a great job. This is true. You don't pay your bills. All right. Here's the situation. So I have a client, really good friend. Her husband is the guy in the, uh, that owns the silk screen shop. And me, silk screen, uh, who I went to elementary school and middle school with. We use a silk screen in the basement that I went to all the style bands with. Um, this is why she has an interior design business, doing really good. I moved down here from New York. She's running it out of her house, and this is the direction she is for a logo. I built their website. I do some marketing for them, and I'm working with them for a while. I'm on Pinterest, and I'm doing like an, I'm doing some research to design a, a bathroom in my house. I find this person. So let's, let's look at where we're at. We're here. And this person's here. So they basically took your design and you changed the color. Or they took their design. Well, we're established before them, right? Uh, we do a little research into the company, and it heads up that their, um, their assistant interior designer or their lead interior designer happened to have interned with us two years prior. Oh, so they got to see. So they understood the workflow. They worked with us for a little while, and they went over there. Not the owner, in principle, but one of their. And their icon is our icon, but rotating. Yeah. Okay, kind of same feel, kind of same direction, all right? So she gets all worried about it, and I said, "Well, where are they at? Maybe they're like in California or something like that. So there's not really that, you know, we're in Winter Park." And they're in Orlando. Mm -hmm. Their shop is about 25 minutes away from our shop. Wow. All right, so she gets a lawyer to write a cease and desist letter. The lady says, I'll change everything as long as you pay for me to pay for a graphic designer to change it. Because I'm not the one who came up with it. I paid a company to do it. This is what they gave me. I ran with it. She comes to me and says, what should I do, Omar? Should I Pursue this further. And I said, what's your icon? What is it? Do any of you know what this icon is? Okay. It's called a Greek key. So from Greece, the Roman Empire, right? So how old do you think this icon is? It's very old. So don't you think anyone can use it? It's not ours to own. It's not original. It's clip art. So I told her I wouldn't. I wouldn't chase it. That's clip art. Why don't you make your own? We can design it. We can create it. She asked me for advice, but she's an interior designer. She's creative. She draws. She does interiors all the time. What does she do? She does her own sketches. All right, so I go over here and I look at it. I'm like, all right, cool. And she goes, could you make these for me and let me know or see where we should go? So she didn't tell me to design her logo. She asked me to kind of 
go over her sketches. And do it. So what do I say to her? Yes. Say yes. I'm going to make you happy. That's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm, I'm a problem solver. This is your problem? You want me to make these look good? Okay. Here you go. What do you think? Uh, I think it was the same time. In a weird way, if you drop the design studio 15, I kind of like it. Okay. It's like a signature for a piece of artwork, maybe. Yeah. Right yeah. 15 upside down doesn't really work. Uh, the 15 this way. But this starts to look like its own letter. Mm hmm. It looks like an eye. Or an arrow going up. Right? Then you could take some different shapes from there. So then she looks at this and she's like, you know what, Omar, why don't you do what you do? All right, so? Transform. Wow. My V1. Optimus Prime. This is where I'm at on my first version. I send it to them, I present this to them in person. We're sitting at a desk. You know, I got, it's like four girls around me, uh, all interior designers, all, you know, creative. And I said, where do we go from here? So where do you think we went? Uh, probably the ten or thirteen. Uh, I like fourteen. All right, so we like fourteen. Where's thirteen? Thirteen over here. Ten. Twenty-two or fifteen. That's what my guess is. Twenty-two and fifteen. Where's fifteen? Well, you don't have 15. the ones on the left. Look at the far left. I don't see like numbers, whatever. Yeah, the bottom one, the far one. This one right here? Yeah, that one's pretty sick. I like the second one down on the left, too. Okay. So I like two. So the one they chose isn't on here. Mm -hmm. Right? They said, I gave them 30, and they said, I like number 31. <laughs> Right? Now they love these. They, they love this. They said they love all these right here, right? Um, this one's great right here, right? The problem is there's a furniture builder who designs chairs like that. She sells them, but she's not the builder. So if we do that silhouette of that chair, it kind of makes them think like maybe she's the builder of those chairs. And we don't want there to be any confusion. All right, number 14. A little bit kind of like yoga spirited, a little, little different audience that we might go, be going at. Um, for some reason, she does not like serif fonts all that much. Even though I love the way these came out, she's not a huge fan of the serif. So she said, I love the number one. But it's an interior design firm. Um, now it's a lot of ladies and two guys. Is that font feminine or no? Or masculine? Masculine. The font over here. It's masculine. It's a little masculine. I think it's real bold. It's it has feet. Yeah. I'd say it goes It doesn't look like macho. Doesn't look macho. No, it just looks very modern. It's a little chunky though, right? All right, so it's a Rockwell soft font. It's a slap serif soft font. So it has it has the feet like a serif does, but they're blocks. Right. So this is kind of similar, though, right? Mm -hmm. But that has that whole inline effect. So the inline is when you have like a stroke on the inside of it, kind of feel. Um, and this was cool, but it wasn't exactly what they were looking for. So we went here. So no matter how good of a job you think you did initially, you can always do better. And that's what the process is for. The most important thing to get out of this class is one color and two workflow. It's your process, how you put it all together, how you connect all those dots to get the end result that you want. So that ended up being their logo. This 15 coming in and out, the one coming under and then above over here, Design Studio 15. And now it's evolved, and we have different renditions of it and everything. So, but that's kind of the process for that. Do you put royalty on it? No. 
I charge them and they own it. That's his friend. He wouldn't do that to them. That was not totally. All right, so here's a student example of your project that you're going through right now. You guys know Chase Morgan? Yeah. yeah? Cool cat. Um, you know, he learned a lot when he was in class. We went through a lot of process. Uh, he brainstormed a lot with me, so he took advantage of Mr. Clean, which you all can as well. Um, he has his brief, his word list, not too colorful, kind of there. All right, could have made it better. But it fits the qualifications. He has a target audience, he has inspiration. Competitor logo, display fonts, you'll see no Apple chance there, and you'll compile it right? Great success. His info level fonts, and then his sketches. This is where you're all at. You should have your sketches at this point in time. And then from your sketches, we pick your top three. So we like this as an icon, we like this as an icon. And we like the top one could feel for him, right? The face, she was, he or she was so pissed off, right? Too much of a story here. I don't know what's going on here. The top is just like part of the Greek key, nothing else, right? And then you got a leaf and a flower, which aren't really that big of a concept right here. Next step is the logo process. So we picked three, and then he had to do 10 versions of each. So 10 ideas, 10 separate elements of each of these. You play around with a different font, you might play around with, well, you're gonna be just doing them black and white, but different shapes, all right? Over here, it's evolving. Over here, it's evolving, right? He's going ham, he's going crazy over here. 10 of each, so 30 different logos. So you understand what you do here? You have your top three, you're gonna go into Illustrator, and you're gonna push each one of them. And at least 10 of each version. Then you do your logo test. Logo rough one, two, and three. All right, this is your auditioning, you're going on a date. This is how it might look on a letterhead. This is how it might look on a on a business card. This is how it might look on a letterhead. This is how it might look on a business card. Letterhead and business card. The reason you do this is so you can see, th does this work on a business card? It might look great when it's this big in front of me, but does it work once we put it on a business card? Does it work on the letterhead? All right? So on paper, it looked great. You know, on paper, you know, the Mets should win be champions, but they gotta play and win. And we find out that they're terrible, mm -hmm. right? They don't win. So in theory, the logos are good, but once you put them here, you're gonna find out if they're really good or not. So this logo rough three, two, and one, and this is what we need when we see you on Monday, right? In order to get there, you have to know which three you have. So if you didn't have three today that worked for you, if you're not walking out of here with three ideas to push further, you need to get those three ideas. All right, so you need to keep on sketching, you need to communicate with us, email us, and show us your sketches, and then we'll pick out the three that we feel that you should go with. All right? Um. Here is here's a video of me doing this process or this uh, packaging process for color theory. Do your research, you already did your research, right? Start sketching, you've already done the sketching. 10 logo roughs, we should be there, right? 
Now you jump into Illustrator. All right. This is me going into Illustrator, playing around with different types, playing around with different colors, finding out what I really want, and going through it. Now I have to see everything that I've been thinking of or playing around with. I just don't dive in Illustrator and do one logo. I dive in Illustrator and do 30 logos. All right. Option drag. Get your logo to a place that you like it, and then like it some more. Get your logo to a place that you hate it, option drag it, and then hate it some more. The worst thing I can hear a student say is, I had it like that last night, but I deleted it because I didn't like it. Delete nothing. It's Illustrator. If you want to change it, option drag and change it. You want to change it some more, option drag and change it some more. Never delete anything. Because when you tell me you deleted something, that means you didn't do it. Packaging. I went through the packaging. I made a four pack. I went to Art Systems to print this out. I printed it. Uh, after I printed it, I glued it to a poster board because the paper wasn't thick enough to hold a four pack of beer. I printed out the labels. Then I went to start building my mock up. So after you do your identity package, you're then going to dive into the packaging part. The packaging part, after you finish it, go through the versions. We're going to print them out, and you're going to cut them up and build them. Right? You notice there's no scissors in my hand, right? You have to get nice with a razor blade for graphic designers. Straight lines. I can't cut that straight line with scissors. Scissors always give me a little, little curve. All right? And that's cool if you snoop dog and you lean it. But we're not leaning. We want straight lines. So then I made the four pack. I made one representing CMYK and the other one representing RGB. So the white ones are the CMYK and the black ones are RGB. Fuck up. What? A dream? A drink? Yeah. That's a four pack of love. You know? Yay! Yay, Omar, way to go! Whoa, whoa, whoa. I like your idea with you dipping the bottles in the paint bucket and then letting them drip. That's a you. great idea. So, let's open up our computers. Let's quit After Effects. Been caught, but <laughs> I, I want you to listen to me because when you come up and talk to me, I listen to you, right? Say no. Say no. All right. So in here, you have your lecture six identity logo roughs. Open up that file. You have your logo design mood board. That AIT. Open up these two illustrated files. These are the two files that you will be working on for the next steps of your project. Okay, so as you're opening them up, I will show you how my Illustrator boards work, or how I work once I'm inside of Illustrator. I have multiple boards here, and I have, I'm working up all the logos, I'm working them up as I saw with that first one for the logo roughs. Now, I normally have a lot of colors on here, I also have a lot of fonts on here. These are all separate, you notice they're not in one text frame, they're all separate in here. So. What it is, what I can do here is when I'm working on something and I say, well, I, let's find the mark here. So let's say I like this one, right? And I go, I want to change the font or have something different here. I go down here and say, well, you know what? I'm feeling this font. I can copy it. Come up here, paste it, and then I can work from there, right? I can then option drag it, right? 
All right, I can go over here. And try some different things out. See whether I like it or not. Play around with those different fonts. All right? Don't pick three fonts and then call it a day. I want you to explore and I want to see your exploration. I want to visually see all of the renditions you did and see what you liked and didn't like. And I want to see that you experimented and you tried some different things. I don't want to just see your end result and said, well, that's what I did. And that's it. I want to see the process. The most important thing right now is your process. That's the only way we can help you. All right, if you show me your final logo and I hate it, then how can I help you from there? I have to know how you're thinking and how you're working. And the only way I can help you is by going through these steps. Now, let's say I'm working on a different logo for something else, right? Right now, this all says SingLoud Media. So I can highlight this. Copy, right? I go to edit, find, and replace. Edit, find, and replace, right? I paste in here, single out media, and I go, type my name. So I hit find and replace all. 101 times it's going to change it. I hit OK, done. So now everywhere that it said single out media, now it says, Omar right. Tinas. What's the benefit of that? So, once you do this, you save that as a template. And the next time you start a logo, you open up that template, you find and replace with the next company's name. Just making this one time might take an hour, right? I'm option dragging it, picking a different font. Option dragging, picking a different font. Option dragging, picking a different font. Do that one time. And the next time you move forward, you just open up your file of work you already did and replacing with the new company name. Your visual people, you have to look at those fonts. Because if not, you'll end up using the same font for every project. And you're like, why? It's just the font I like. It always, it's always good for me. This is, allows you to explore, and I want to see exploration. All right, you'll see here. What do I have over here? All right, and guess where I got it from? That other file. I copied and pasted in here, and now I can see how all these fonts look when they say raw martini. And then I go through my versions. It was a pitch that uh, someone wanted me to do for a place in St. Augustine. I never even met the clients, um, but they said do it. And this is me, normally one night, just going to town. All right? Normally this is my process. Once I get going, option drag, boom, knock out another one. Option drag, knock out another idea. Option drag, knock out another idea. So did they ever pick any of them? Um, they didn't ever pick a winner. I don't think they moved forward with that. Um, but this is practice. You know, this is like doing push-ups. If you don't have clients, make up clients and do it. Do you often you, meet with your clients? I normally meet with my clients, yes. You know, but this one was, it was a favorite for a friend. It was the owner of uh, this DS15. She was like, I got a friend. They're doing this thing. Could you send me some roughs for a logo? And I did it. Um, not really caring at the point in time. I was just, they're push-ups. All right. You're not always going to get clients, but you always need to practice. You might not always be busy, especially in these younger years. All right, right now I don't have time to do push-ups as much as I used to. My push-ups are work right now. All right? But when I didn't have work all the time, I have to keep my skill set sharp. The one from the video.
all my type over here, and then you explore. You get off the artboard. This is another reason why my artboards are always white. You don't see that dark gray in the background? The reason why is because I'm I'm flash and drag. Those gray spaces make me feel like I'm done. And when you're an illustrator, you never know. Option drag, keep it moving. Option drag, do something else to it. Option drag, do something else to it. Until you get to a place where you love it. So, these are the files that you should have opened. You look over here where it says logo font list. I select this where it says logo name. I go to edit, copy, command C. I go to edit, find, and replace. Edit, find, and replace. Find, I paste in where it says logo name, and I replace with find, replace all. 58, hit OK. Done. So now it says company name. But, what's the problem here? It's only one font. Alright. So I can do Command T. Go over here. Say, oh, that's cool. All right, now you see how quickly I now have some different fields of fonts and I can see how they will look or work with my logo. Then you bring your sketches in here and you start working on your sketches. Now, I want you to fill all of these in with a different font. I know your system font has 800 and something fonts on there, right? If you don't have any fonts that you like, download some. I'm not mad at you. But I want to see you explore with different fonts. I want to see you playing around. Then over here, you start designing. So, you know, these are just shapes and these are colors. You don't really have to use these. If these are bothering you, delete them. You don't need them there. But normally, when I start with something, I normally have a bunch of shapes over here or things that I have. Like it's, there are elements that I've made. But they're kind of my own clip art now. They're shield, they're different, a whole bunch of different things. I put them all on here, and that way, if I need it, I could just drag it and pull it over. If I need a crest, I could just drag it and pull it over, and I have a crest. So shapes or logo shapes in here is just that. Just put some shapes that you might want to use for your logo. And then you start exploring. Right, I come in here, say, oh, that's not the one. Let me, maybe if I put this over here and make this bigger, maybe that's going to work for me. Maybe, oh, I'm not feeling that. Let me put this over here. Oh, I'm liking that. Maybe I come over here. Maybe this goes back. Maybe this gets bigger. Maybe I select this, I go to effects, wrap, and maybe I put a rise on it. You're exploring. But we don't do this. I don't like that. This is it. Because when you come in and I tell you that this is not it, I want to see options. And I don't see options, then to me, you didn't do the work. Be like, no, no, I really, really did. I'm like, well, if you really, really did, show me. And you can't tell me your dog ate your homework, right? You know what, dog ate my laptop. 
All right, so 10 of each. If there's not enough space in here, make another artboard. All right? I could do 10 in here, 10 in here, 10 in here. Now you have multiple artboards to work on. All right? You can do them all in here if you want to. If you need to add extra slides into your presentations, add another page in your presentation and make each 10 individual. That's fine too. As long as we see the process. Then after here, you're going to audition your top three. So from the 30 you design, you pick what you feel is the best one of each of them. So then you go in here and you're going to audition it. So if I'm in here, I could say, all right. I like this one. All right. Now, in your other one, your logo rough one, logo rough one, two, and three, you'll see that there's layers over here to work on. One of the layers says your design. The other layer says envelope design copy which really means it is all the content that's there. And then the last one is your guides. All right? All right, so let's go over your guides. So right here is your business card. You have three lines here. The first line is your margin. Your margin is for a safe zone where all live type can go. So that means any text that you want people to actually read, it does not go past the blue line. Your red line here is your trim. Your black line is your bleed. Now these lines normally are swapped because it would make sense that your trim line is black and your bleed line is red. Right. The reason why I use these colors and making this is because when you do business cards, a lot of time, whatever website might be printing your business cards, they'll have a template that you download. That Illustrator template or Photoshop template that you download has this set up for you. And for some reason, these are the colors that they use. So that's why I built it in these color palettes. And in design, your black line is your trim and your red line is bleed. Right? Do you know what bleed is for? Do all of you know what bleed's for? Um, I don't know how to articulate it, but it's, it's for where the artwork's going to sit. Right? Or like... So... Because they say it all the time. Like, if you're trying to bleed, like, you, your artwork goes off. Go to bleed. So, if I go over here... And that's on my business card here. All right. That means I'm putting a border on my business card. Okay. And the reason why you don't like to have borders in your business card is because this area from the red line to the black line is room for error. All right. So when the printer prints them out and the blade goes down, they have that much space for the blade to move this way or that way. It's to protect them. Because the blade's not going to be 100% exact every time it prints. It has to have a little bit of play space. So if I want blue to be in my business card, I don't move it over here to the trim. I'm going to take it all the way to the bleed. And now that would Live text in here, trim here, bleed here. All right? So I don't want to see you put a color back there and it stopped there. Because that means you might get like a white line on just one side of your business card. Always take it to the bleed. All right, same for this. 
So then you have here, you have your content, and then you have your design. So really, all you need is your design, because your design still has all these guidelines here. All right. Now, if you select any of your guidelines and they move, go to View, Guides, Lock Guides. Lock Guides. Make sure your guides are locked. You don't want these to be moving on you or to be part of your work. Right. What should your business card have? Mm-hmm. So you need all this in your business card. Do you think that it should say name, Omar Martinez, title, teacher, address, and then address? No. No? That's just a price order so we know where to put it. Correct. You know how many times I've seen name, John Doe, title, CEO, phone number? Many a times. A and lot of times. See him next time. No, I don't see him next month. No? No? no. I let him pass with a D. <laughs> oh, you said him slide. No, not necessarily. But fill this out. After you fill it out once, do you have to fill it out again? No, sir. You just no. copy it. Option drag it. All right. Hierarchy. Do we all know what hierarchy is? Alright, so if I go over here. I might want these to be bigger. What's the most important thing on my business card? Me. Me. Right? Whoever a business card is for, that's why they're handing it out. You know, the title might be a little bit smaller. I might go a little bit smaller with it. I might, you know, go italic with it. Who knows? And the rest of the information is there. Hierarchy. Show it a little bit of love. That's all. Nothing crazy. And then what you're going to do here is, if you go to your design, right? So I can turn these off. I go over here. Over here, I could um, set it right. I can do like uh, something for my footer. Right. I can have that letter in here. All right. So over here, you see a letter. This doesn't really fit, so I'm gonna make this fit. At this point in time. I don't mind that you use the stuff that we gave you here. What I am going to mind is after you've gone through this process that you keep this stuff on there. You're going to have to allow it to evolve. So this time, don't worry about the signature and what the letter is. You're just playing around with it and seeing how it looks. Once you pick your final, no Laura Mifsim and no John Smith signature. Right? You can make your own signature, right? And then you go over here. Take it, option drag it. Boom, I can play around with it, right? Then you move on to the next one. Just go back over here, go through your process. If there's one you liked.
Turn around with it. Maybe this is a... Alright, you can play around with it. Then you import each artboard into InDesign individually and you present your process and your logo, your selections from there. Is there any question of what we want to see on Monday? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Mm -hmm. So you're here. Process ten of each. Logo test one, two, and three. You can keep it black and white. You don't have to worry about color at this point in time. You can keep it black and white. If it doesn't work in black and white, it's not going to work in color. All right. Any questions? So start working on your sketches. Show me some sketches before you leave, please. And we're not leaving right now. We're still working.